I told people, you know, um, I mean, they knew what I was, what I was studying, what I was doing when I first started during the summer. I was outside and I'm running around from park to park, and they're like, "Where are you?" You know, I'm like, "Well, I'm at this park," and they're like, "Oh my god!" You know, <laughs> people just thought I was crazy. But then when I bought this house, they were like, "What? Fifteen hundred? And I sold it. They were like, "What?" Make sure there's nothing embarrassing behind me. I got forced into the garage. <laughs> You got to put out the house. <laughs> no, I got to put out the house. I was like, can I have a little bit of quiet time for some for a call? I was like, nope, you better go to the garage. <laughs> That's where we are. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. This is cool. It's cool to finally see you. Yes, yeah, good to see you too. <laughs> It'd be nice to do a Zoom call now when you are getting started and then one maybe a little down the road but I think you share a unique perspective. You've done your first mobile home deal yes. ever. Okay. Yes. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> You're an officially a mobile home investor. I'm not, right. I'm not sure how that makes you feel. That's a good thing. It should be it a good thing. Great. Yeah, it feels great. Yeah. <laughs> Especially getting that payment at the end. I know that. That was, good. That was pretty amazing. I'm like, wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> On... On the, on the mobile home investing podcast, on these case studies, I don't like to paint a rosy picture of investing. It takes I mean, 95% of you know, the stuff of investing isn't even on these videos. It's the hard work, it's sitting in the car, it's going through parks, it's going to appointments, it's advertising, it's marketing. Um, hmm. And on a lot of these podcasts, I try to show the, the, that there's difficulties in, in these deals and there's learning lessons, but your first home, your first home, I'd say was a home run. It was wonderful. It was, there was very little stumbling blocks along the way. And I want people to see what a, you know, what a deal that it feels like it was on a silver platter. I remember talking to you like, where's the catch? Where's the catch? Right, you got to right. look closer because there's something not right here. Um, but it was right. And it was very profitable and you would not even have, gotten this opportunity if you weren't playing the game. I mean, it was your decision to get started with mobile home investing, just to, to do the advertising, the marketing that you did. Before we jump into this first deal, um, why did you feel like uh, when we got started, you know, why mobile home investing and why did you need a mentor? Why did you feel like we needed to, to work together versus doing things on, on, on your own? Well, I always, um, I'm, a, I'm a high school teacher, so I, I value um, education and um, I look for opportunities to learn from people who have expertise. Um, I, I know it shortens the learning curve when you can avoid mistakes. Um, and uh, if a mistake is out there to happen, it's going to happen to me. So I figure I can, you know, I work with someone who can help me, you know, bob and weave and get around them, um, the, um, the pit falls. Um, and so I did my research uh, to find out, you know, who I could go with that could help me with that. And um, I ran across uh, people who you've trained. Um, uh, and I was like, okay, well, they seem really nice and cool. But then the more I looked at it, I was like, well, I want to go with the, I want to go to the source, you know? So um, I, I bypassed the people who um, learned from you and decided I want to come to you. So I'm happy with that decision. And um, and so I, I guess mobile homes, the reason why I even got into it is because I, I was looking for um, uh, ways to make additional streams, streams of income. And um, I recently got my uh, real estate license and, you know, I was like, yeah, I want to I want to do this, but I also want to um, I don't want to just be a salesperson or I, did, I didn't even really want to be a, primarily a salesperson. I, I got involved um, in that just, again, for the knowledge. And uh, since I wanted to do real estate investing, I figure at some point I may need to list and sell. Um, and if that happens, then, you know, why pay somebody else? I can, you know, pay myself. So um, turns out I still haven't done anything with the license, um, but um, I, that's what I, I expected. And what I'm happy about is that the, the, the work I did over the summer after getting into your course, you know, I was just really grinding, running around to parks after parks and, it was just, you know, you know, I kept doing it when I was like, oh, my God, you know, no one's, I mean, people were really nice and everything, but nothing was jumping off, you know, but um, it just goes to show you that you plant those seeds and over time, it, you know, you get your, your reward, they'll start growing and you'll get, you know, you'll be able to harvest. So 
um, one of the tear offs that I put at um, one of the, home, the mobile home parks. Um, I put up a flyer that I got from you that had the little tear offs and the um, mobile home park manager put them in um, the, was it the, uh, the mail room. And apparently the guy who I ended up um, buying a home from tore off the, um, the tear off last summer, put it in his pocket and told him he kept it all this time. I'm like, wow, you know, a little, little bitty piece of paper, who, you know, who holds on to stuff that long? And he did. So it's like, yay. <laughs> It's those, all those little, oh, that's such a cool, that's such, A, thank you for being a teacher, especially in this time. And what, <laughs> what, what grades do you teach or grade? High school. Okay. Yeah. Sophomore yeah. through senior. Have you taught all the different grades and that's where you ended up or? No, I knew I wanted um, high school. I, um, I went to school for business and I was, I worked in corporate America for a while and um, then I just decided I wanted to do something that made me feel like what I was doing mattered. And we got teachers in my family. So I just went back to school to get certified and uh, I became a teacher. So, yeah. <laughs> the, the teaching license, the real estate license, which is cool just to know. I mean, just to know mm -hmm. that stuff that, uh, you know, a, a realtor knows. It's helpful. And there's a lot, still a lot to learn. I'm, I'm, I'm brand new, but um, the Illinois uh, test apparently is like super, super hard. And I passed on the first try. Yay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, eventually, I mean, um, I, you know, I'm not opposed to using it for sales um, and representing people, or, you know, that sort of thing. But um, that's not my goal. That's, you know, and so I want to uh, really uh, stick with mobile homes and um, and try to do my best to, to be as successful as I can with it. I eventually want to be able to um, own land and then own a park, you know, and because that's, I mean, this is nice, you know, you, cause this is amazing, the deal that I had. I mean, I just, like you said, the, um, he just happened to be somebody who was ready. Um, he knew he was going to buy a home when he took off my tear off. He knew he was going to buy a home, um, a single family home at some point. And that's why I said he took the tear off. Um, but then he waited, I guess, to the last minute. He, he was ready to, he'd already closed on his home the next month. If he hadn't sold this mobile home, he's going to have to pay lot rent here and his mortgage at his new home. And he didn't want to pay the, the lot rent. So at that point, he was ready to give the house away. He would have walked away and left it to the, um, to the mobile home park. And I'm like, you know, it seems crazy that people would do that, but I guess he had his, his hands full along the way. And he got to the point where it was like, okay, it's time to move. I need to let this house go. And um, so it was just timing. Um, it worked out where the, the offer that I gave him, even though, from anyone else's perspective, it would be that's not enough money for him. He, he, it was a blessing for him. He, he was happy because money in his hand was better than no money, which is what he was going to have. So. Yeah, this is in a fairly populated area, right? Oh, it's, yes. It's metro yes. market. Okay. And mm -hmm. you're in Illinois, you mentioned. Right, right. The normally, so may I put pictures of the home up? On the, sure. on the video, because this home is gorgeous. When you first sent me over pictures, we were talking about the guy's situation where he was buying a house and he didn't want to mm -hmm. pay two payments, which good for him. He was upgrading. He was moving on with, you know, getting mm -hmm. somewhere else. But normally all the stars don't line up as nicely as they did where the home is mm -hmm. gorgeous. It's a double wide th three, two. Yes. Double wide, three, two, the guy's motivated, doesn't need repairs. The park is super friendly. The exit strategy, you can have your choice of what you want to do. He has mm -hmm. the title. Everything's like everything was just lining up. And yeah. I mean, I think you learn the most when there's like challenges and you can overcome things. But on this one, you still learned a bunch, you know, how, how we close and the paperwork. But mm -hmm. do you mind? This home was really nice. And this guy. Uh, can you talk to uh, more about the guy? I mean, he was super friendly. He was super willing. It was not even a negotiation. What was he asking for the home, right? He didn't have a number. I, I remember we spoke and he was like, well, ask him what he wants. And I did. And he, he was like, you know, you, you make me an offer. He uh, deferred to me on everything. And I, it, it, it was, he was so easy going that um, I, you know, I felt a little uncomfortable at first. I was like, you know, I wonder what the number was that I felt comfortable with. Should I say the number? Sure, please. 
Okay, so I we spoke about it and um, we uh, decided that we, you know, you and I, we said, okay, well, let's offer him fifteen hundred. And and I just knew when I said that he was gonna, you know, lose his mind and you know be like, what? You know, you want to give me fifteen hundred for my home? I've been here for thirty years, you know, because people, you know, they, they develop emotional ties to their property. And um, so I did. I said it gently, you know, but I I, um, I followed it up really quickly with, you know. I understand that that may not be the number you're looking for. And um, by all means, I encourage you to um, to market your home, go out there and get the number that you want, you know, do your best to, to, to get a number that you're going to be happy with, because I don't want to uh, create an environment where you feel that you were taken advantage of. Um, I want you to feel happy about your move. I want you to be happy about the sale. Um, so that's what I can offer, but you know what my company can do, but um, feel free to, to do what's best for you. Don't feel like you need to uh, go with me just because I'm here, you know? And he said, no, no, 1500 sounds great. You know, I, I, you know, that's, that's great. I wasn't going to get anything. And um, thank you. I was like, wow, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we all did a freeway conversation before, right? That was the one mm -hmm. that we, and I, I remember speaking to this gentleman where we, we, we all did. And you're right. He, some people are, they, they, they tell you, they don't know the price. I don't know the price. You tell me what you're thinking, or I don't know. You tell me a number, but they really know a price. Almost right. everyone that says that they have a number in mind. They have, they know exactly the number, but this guy really didn't. I mean, and he lived there. If I forgot, he lived there for that long. He kept it up beautifully. And in his mind, he was going to walk away. If we hadn't closed during the next I mean, right. you, it, it was like a week and a half later. So it was, again, not just those everything lined up well, but it would not have been there if you didn't do the advertising or, you know, put that the, the marketing piece out there in the very beginning, right. like you said, planting yeah. seeds. Right. right, right. It was amazing. I, um, and then I knew that it was um, it wasn't that the park just kept putting my flyers up on the because, um, you know, after a while, the the flyer with the tear offs, you know, people will mess with it. It'll, you know, it'll come down because it starts to look raggedy or whatever. And I wasn't coming back, checking, making sure my flyer was there. I wasn't following up the way I should have been. So that's something that I learned that I should do. Um, but uh, apparently when it was nice and fresh and it was there, he tore it off and held on to it. You'll see that as well. People will call uh, from an old sign, from an old postcard. You don't get rid of your phone numbers. You know, if you're I've had people call back after a year and I'm glad thing I kept that number. I had that you know, number so people could get in touch with me. Um, mm -hmm. What repairs, <laughs> and I remember after you closed it, I remember you specifically saying like, how do we you know, get rid of this thing as quickly as we can? Or I wanna get rid of this quick as we can. What repairs did you do? And how much marketing, how many people needed to go through the home before you sold it? And tell us about that. Okay, I didn't do any repairs. Um, when I was walking through it, the only thing that I saw or felt that was that was off was there was a soft spot in the kitchen, the, the kitchen floor. Um, this is I don't have any experience with mobile homes. I, I, I've never um, I didn't grow up um, around them. I don't have family who lived in them. I, I don't know what a good mobile home that's not brand new is, you know. So when I showed you the pictures and you were like, this is great. I was like, is it? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, but, you know, I knew it wasn't horrible, but what's great? You know, everything's relative, right? Um, but um, I knew that he was proud of it. You know, he, um, he, he loved this house. You know, he was sad to leave. I mean, he even, you know, he's telling me about his, his life, his, his, his wife, his family. You know, he teared up, you know, talking about the whole thing. You know, he lost his, his wife just recently during COVID. So, um, it was, um, you know, it was it was a sad situation, but happy too because he's moving on to a nice new house that he, you know, he had um, purchased for his him and his extended family. He had his daughter and his daughter's daughter living there with him. So you know, it's three generations. So you know, it was happy but sad too. So it, it was it was it was a good experience. So when I walked through, I took the pictures, um, sent them to you. You said that it looks great, and you know, you're always so upbeat. I'm like, it, I didn't know, you know, like is it really? Um, but you, then, then, you know, people started coming in to look at it. People were like, this is great. I'm like, wow, John's right. I guess it is great. <laughs> and 
And um, so to answer your question about how many people came through, I did an open house um, um, after I uh, listed the home on Marketplace. And um, I had like maybe eight people that, that came through. It's a couple of families, a couple of individuals. Um, and everyone seemed interested. People were just really interested. Um, but then, you know, you never know, you know. So I did have one woman who said, well, I see other people are coming through and they seem really interested. Um, when you get an offer, let me know. I'll beat whatever offer you get. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay, we're going to have a little competition here. That's nice. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, turns out she wasn't the one who purchased it. I ended up selling it to a, a man who worked for, who works for a mobile home uh, company where they have parks all over the country. And he was looking like for multiple homes. He needed like 10 homes. And um, he came cash in hand, um, ready to sell the house, I mean, ready to buy the house from me that day. He took the money out of his pocket, you know, and it, I was like, whoa, I mean, I'm in this mobile home by myself with this guy with all this money. Is it, is it real money? I mean, I'm, I'm not, I didn't grow up around all that kind of cash. So when he took the money out, I'm like, I don't even know how to identify uh, counterfeit bills, right? So I didn't have a pen to check and am I going to go through $1,500 with a pen? So, um, no, $15,000 with a pen. So that's okay. $1,500 would be hard enough. $15,000. I'm like, oh my God, right? So I was like, okay, I had to, I, I was going to call you, but I called a, another friend and said, I have to call my partner and, um, and, and discuss, you know, you know, just try to back him off of me for a minute because he was ready to just do it right then. And um, I trusted him in a sense that he seemed like he was um, legitimate. He, I didn't get creepy, scammy vibes off of him. But you know, I don't know. Those are you know, people, yeah, ones you right, watch you know, out for. <laughs> exactly. I mean, serial killers don't actually look like serial killers, right? So I'm like, I don't know, right? So let me back up because if he's too anxious, then maybe he's trying to get me to hurry up um, and make a, a decision before I get a chance to think about it, right? Because if I suppose it was mostly, if it was all counterfeit bills, or maybe good ones on the outside, but fake ones on the inside. And I've got this money and that's it. He's gone. Right. So, so let me slow him down. And, and that's why I went outside and talked to, to a friend and um, they were just like, well, tell him that you want to, um, cause this was a Sunday. So we couldn't go to a bank. Um, there was no way for me to, to, to authenticate the, the money. So, and he said, you know, he's from out of town. So he was said he was only going to be there for, you know, he's going to be leaving right away. And like, well, you know, I, I told him that, you know, I didn't feel comfortable taking the money right then. No offense to him, but it's a lot of money. I don't want to be handling all that money. I don't want to transport all, all that money myself. And I want to authenticate it, you know, uh, no offense, but, you know, this is business and I need them to, you know, run the money through the machine so that the bank can say, OK, this I, I'll put this in your account because I'm saying we're saying it's good. You know, he was in and he said, OK. And so he came back and we went to the bank and that was it. You know, I was like, oh my God, it worked. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. He, and then he, he had the money because, you know, he was like a um, cool type of guy. He had the, uh, a leather jacket on with the, all this money in his pockets. So he pulled the money out. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> but he said he does that. He brings cash because... He wants people to know that he's 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 for real. He's not playing games because people will will just you know waste your time. And he didn't want to. He wants to let people know that he's he's serious. And so he was so serious he scared me. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but he came back with the same money and gave it to the um, teller and okay. everything was great. So, was the goal in the beginning to sell to to flip a few for cash and and build up cash or go right into cash flow or what's was this. Yeah, so I want to I want to build up um, some capital, um, and I don't want to. Um, eventually, I do want to uh, be a landlord, you know. But um, that wasn't my goal with the mobile home right now, you know. Um, do I want to do it with mobile homes? Eventually, I'm I'm not sure, you know. I guess it depends on whether or not that turns out to be something that looks like it's going to be more profitable than selling it. Maybe if it's a, a, such a nice home. And I, you know, I feel like there won't be a lot of, um, uh, we call it a uh, upkeep. And, you know, with this home, I just felt like, I mean, it was 1999, right? And I, I don't know. 
some people were telling me you should keep it and just rent it. I'm like, yeah, I could, but it would take me a long time to get that 15,000. Um, and I wanted it. <laughs> I wanted the money. No, you did just fine. And there will be plenty more deals. So that is, you know, you did great. That is yeah, <laughs> great deal. seriously. The, um, what did you, I know we talked pretty briefly. Is there anything that was surprising to you or that was uh, that we didn't talk about that was a learning lesson or something that people can watch out for and, you know, listening to this or something like that? Mm, well, this one, I didn't really have any, um, any issues, although I did go right away. I did um, transfer the title, not the, yeah, the title over to, you know, went to the DMV and, and fill out the paperwork. And there were a couple of people who, before I had the title in hand, they, they were, they said they were ready to buy, but they wouldn't buy it because they didn't, didn't have the title in hand. So that was like, well, you know, should I transfer it over into my name? Should I have not transferred it over? You know, I guess it's kind of like, you never really know. Some people, it would like, I talked to you about it and you said that there would be another uh, step that we'd have to take if it wasn't in my name. Um, so it, it could we could have done that, but I'd already went, gone to the DMV before I talked talk to you about it. So I didn't, you know. No, I mean, the fa- at that point you won. So it's like, you know, put the title under your control. Don't, there's pros and cons, but no, by that point you had already won. So that's just, okay. you did the right, yeah, you did the right okay. thing. So you, you mentioned the, um, pulling the, the, home, the, the home out, the, the buyer that I had for the home here, they are pu- pulling the, the home out. And the park manager, you know, she didn't raise her eyebrows or anything about it. She, I even specifically said, you know, is that a problem? But no, basically she's like, it's, it's, you can do whatever you want. It's your house, you know? I am so glad you mentioned that. That I'm really glad that you touched on that uh, because that's not the norm. That is, that's, that's, a, that's a good minority, maybe 20%, where some parks, they really don't care about you pulling a home out. And it's weird. You know, you're, you're thinking, I, it's weird to me. Whenever I talk to a manager and I let them know, hey, I might be pulling the home out, or, and, and they don't get upset or they don't have an instant, like, bad reaction, that's very weird because 80% of the time they should. Miss manager, do you mind if I pull it out of here? Yes, don't pull it out. We don't want you to. So 80% of the time, they don't want you to, but 20% of the time, which is another star that li- that lined up. You might not mm-hmm. have gotten 15 cash if it stayed there. Do you think that you right. would have or no? He wouldn't have purchased it. Okay. He was the, out of the like maybe five, or, no, no, maybe, I think I'm, uh, maybe out of the maybe seven or eight people that came, maybe four or five of them, said they wanted it and, and they like they seemed really really um motivated to, to have it and out of those half of them wanted to live in it and a couple wanted to uh, move it so um it wasn't just him who wouldn't buy it unless it unless, unless they could move it and the fact that it was a 99 works because he, this guy wouldn't have taken it apparently you can't move homes that are over a certain age and you know, so that worked out perfectly. So I was like, wow, this is just, you know, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, if the manager had said, we wanted to stay here, it would have been your decision. Okay. Do you, it's your, still your title. Do you move it out? And well, you might been, have been penalized depending on the lease that you signed with the park or the rules, but I never signed anything. Oh, okay. Even, did you get you didn't have to you didn't get approved at the park or anything no uh, when i when i paid the lot rent mm-hmm. the the receipt i got had the previous owner's name on it okay and you just so she didn't she never wanted me to apply for anything she just said you know just she was easy breezy and this man knew just what was going on yeah mm-hmm. right. yeah so to your point just because they say don't pull it out doesn't mean i can't pull it out it just means that if you do it you're gonna create an environment where it's not going to be easy to work there anymore. Big time. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or in some parks though, I'm the guy that just pulls the homes out. The park doesn't want to work with me from the beginning. They said, John, we got the park. Like we don't need your help in the park, but we do have occasionally homes that we want to get rid of. And if you want those homes, you know, you can pull them out. We'd rather you do it for free, but you know, instead of us paying somebody to demo them, so in some parks, I'm like their go-to guy for pulling homes out. And I'll- You'll pull out homes that 
are not nice? Well, me and you have different definitions of not nice. <laughs> but yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, okay. And then whether, whether I keep them for myself or put them somewhere or I'm selling them to some other one, somebody else that wants to move it. But, but this is, we have a lot more to do. This is just the beginning. And uh, this as is soon as I, I told people, you know, um, I mean, they knew what I was, what I was studying, what I was doing when I first started during the summer, I was all excited. I'm running around from park to park and they're like, where are you? You know, I'm like, well, I'm at this park. And they're like, oh my God, you know, <laughs> people just thought I was crazy. But then when I bought this house, they were like, what? 1500? And I sold it. They were like, what? You got another one? Can I have the next one? I'm like, are you crazy? <laughs> no, you can't have the next one. <laughs> Oh, that is awesome. Yes. Yes. You, what were you thinking? You were crazy. What are you getting into? You're crazy for thinking this could work. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> when it's not part of your, um, it's not part of what you have any knowledge about. It's so outside of uh, anybody's uh, that I know, their world. Yes. And just to even be in the park, you know, walking around, talking to people. I'm like, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's a regular people, just regular people, you know? And um, so it, it's been a good experience. I, you know, it felt good to help this man. Um, it, you know, it's all of it. Just it, it felt good, you know. So and he was genuinely very happy. He yes, yes, yeah. yes, he was. And um, even afterwards, because sometimes, you know, it's like if you go uh, to the store and buy something, you think it's a good deal, and then you get home, you're like, "What? I got ripped off," you know. And he didn't feel that way. I, I talked to him after he. With the transaction was over. I had questions that that I didn't ask before that people were asking me when they were coming through the home, and um, he answered. You know, he would talk on the phone. He would he would answer texts, and he was always still super nice. His energy never changed. It wasn't no one ever got in his ear apparently and said, you know, you sold the house for what? You know, you shouldn't. Have, she ripped you off. No one. If someone said that to him, he didn't feel that way, or no one ever said that to him. But whatever the, the case was, he remained positive about me. And um, I mean, not that I'm ever going to see him again, but I don't want that kind of energy out there. I don't want people to associate an experience with me as something negative. And as far as I can tell, he isn't. And I like that. I'm happy about that. <laughs> the buyer's happy. The seller is happy. I need to get back out there and, and do what I need to do so that I can build up some momentum. And, you know, because I want some more mobile homes. <laughs> <laughs> and you will have them. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. This was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else uh, you need in the future? Obviously, we're not going anywhere. So I'm sure okay. I'll talk to you soon. But thank you so much again for hopping on the call. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a great one. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.